Okay, let's learn about surdy. So surdy in Rust is about, actually let's start with the name, surdy. That is because it's about serialization and deserialization, deserialization. So serialization means if you have a Rust type and you turn it to something like uh, JSON or YAML and uh, deserialize is the reverse. So that is uh, into a Rust type. And what that is about is, um, so JSON is, um, most people probably know what it is, but just in case you don't, JSON will look like a, um, so it's a JavaScript uh, thing that has become, ended up uh, pretty universal. If you have like a server and you want to, um, uh, you want to make like a new user or something like that, you go like uh, ID username and uh, let's see, there we go. So you have these, um, they'll usually show up as uh, raw strings. Or, and then you'll have like a uh, name, actually ID, let's turn that into a number. And then name is uh, Mr. Mr. Userson, like that. So you'll have these um, in 30 or in, uh, in JSON, these are, there's pretty much no types. There's like string, there's you know, number. Uh, there's not much and whereas rust is a lot stricter so you want to take this and turn it into a rust type and then uh, on the other side if you have a rust type and then you want to uh, send a request to a server you want to turn it into something that looks like this and you want them to match up and that is what surdy is for and the main way you use it is uh, pretty easy basic uh, basic surdy is pretty easy later on you, there's like a lot of um use these attributes if you need to change uh, change a few things, but we'll look at that in a second. So usually what you do is you use the um, serialize and deserialize these um, attributes uh, macros and you'll have, let's say, let's say we have a struct and this is a user and just like here you've got a name and then you've got an ID and that'll be like a U32. And let's say we also have um, is deleted. And then this is not going to come in on the request. It's just going to be people will request a user and then we'll start one up and then it'll be, it'll start out as, as false. And then maybe in our database, we want to delete it later, but we don't want it to disappear. So we just say is deleted true. And we keep it around just in case it needs to be recreated or something like that. So this, um, so that is our user and what you do is you have all these derives here so usually you want debug and serialize and deserialize just in case if you know exactly how you're going to use it then maybe you only want serialize or deserialize if you know it's only going one way or, or coming back the other way but we'll just put both in and then we'll say we'll have another struct and this is going to be a new user request and for that we need a string and we need we need a name and an id and is deleted we don't need that because they are not the people requesting are not involved in that um, deserialize so basically that's what you'll do all you have to do is put this uh, serialize deserialize and then it's going to going to work but uh First we'll actually do some, uh, put a function together so that we can actually do something here. Uh, so let's say we want to make some users. We have, um, we have a new user request. And so we know it's going to be a, a proper user. Well, we, what we'll do is we'll have a, um, we'll have some exam, actually I'll copy, copy and paste these because they're, it's just a lot of typing. So these, are the two requests we have coming in. So we've got a good one and we've got a bad one. The good one, see it's got a name here, it's got an ID here. The name is a string, so it's uh, even JSON has strings, uh, it knows what that is. And then the ID is a an actual number. And then here we have a bad one and this one has two problems. So uh, ID is uh, IDD and then also this is a string instead of a number. So we've got those two. And then what we're going to do is try to turn them into a new user request and then use that to make a user. So first we have, let's see, make user. So make user is going to take 
a new user request and once we have a new user request we know it's properly formed so we Serdi will try to make it into a new user request and if this type can be made then it's fine uh, it's a proper rust type now and so there, there will be no problem so we just have a user and we go request.name so we bring in the name we go id is going to be request.id they're the same type so that's fine and then is deleted we'll just go false for now and so now we have a, uh, a user function and then finally we're going to have a handle request and this is where we're going to see if the uh if the json that comes in is actually uh proper and we can make a user request from it so that's going to just be a stir and then what we're going to do actually surdy on its own is just for the serialization and deserialization and if you want to use uh json there's another crate there so we'll use surdy json and that uh that's where you take a string and uh like a, a json string and then you try to turn it into into a rust type or the other way around and uh where were we so so we're going to go surdy json so there's a function called from from stir and uh, we'll take json request and then we are going to let's see what are we doing all right so it could be okay so we'll call it a uh, good request it's going to do something and it might be an error in which case whoops in which case we'll call that e and then we're going to do something so um let's see okay good request so we'll do this let new user equals uh, make user good request and then we will uh, print that out because it's worked so we'll say made a new user and then we'll print out the uh the new user and we'll use the um pretty printing and by the way this uh this kind of uh formatting happened in uh rust a few months ago so it used to be this was the only way to do it and of course this still works but if you prefer you can um you can move them inside here when you're printing the only thing you can't do is like uh like functions so you can't you can't put like uh you can't call a function inside here or like uh, a property of a, of a struct so you couldn't say like new user dot name that wouldn't work so this isn't uh you can't use this all the time uh but uh so we got that and then error if it doesn't work then we'll just uh print out the error so like that got an error from and this is called uh json request and then we'll also print out the error so like that and and then finally at the end so we're going to use this handle request so that function is um just takes a stir so that's fine so we'll handle request good json request we'll do that and handle request and we have bad json request so let's just make sure it runs and then if it runs we'll go over it again it is deleted false user ah it's deleted there we go typo okay so it works so what um let's just go over it one more time so i also format it just in case it okay so we start out with the um the surdy request so this one is not this one is going to work fine this one is not going to work and we have this uh handle request so it just puts a puts a stir in there and then um what it does is it goes to here and uses uh surdy json from stir actually let's look at this uh from stir it's pretty simple you just um 
just take a stir and then it turns into a result of T where T is deserialized. So deserialize is turning into a Rust type. So it's just going to take a stir and try to turn it into that Rust type. So that is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, where were we? Um, make user. Okay, so we try to uh, make a JSON request here. And I guess Rust knows the um, knows the type here because uh, because make user is uh, what it needs is a what is it? It needs a new user request so it knows. So another another way you could do you could say like uh, let uh, JSON request equals um, user request equals and then sturdy json from stir json request so usually you'll have to indicate the type here uh, but i guess it can uh figure it out otherwise yeah otherwise you'll have to uh, let it know and that's where like you can see here let you user equals blah 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 so here you have to let it know what uh, what is going to be so you might have to do that so if it's fine uh then we have a good request and that is going to be a new user request because make user make user only takes that so you take uh, uh, you take the user request and stick it in the make user and then make user will take that and turn it into a user then we print out the user and then if it doesn't work then uh, you get an error and so we can print this out again and then we're going to fix the bad JSON request and so you can see the, the uh, error here is Missing field ID at line five, uh, line five, column five. So that's like one, two, three, four. And Serdi always, it's always like one line off for some reason. I'm not sure why. Whenever I, um, whenever I do this in, in practice, it's always, it'll say like line five. But for me, one, two, three, four, it'll, it'll look like line four. So I don't know if that's just me, but. So if we change that to ID, then it'll go to the next error. And you can see invalid type string 6877 expected uh, U32 at line four, one, two, three, four. Hmm. This time it's line four. So it expected a U32. So you turn that into a number and then it should work. It should both work. So now you can see we made these two uh, new users and they worked. So that's basic, uh, basic SERTI. And so what will happen usually with Serdy is you start using it like this and then eventually you'll have a, a reason to uh, maybe like, for example, you would name when you turn this into JSON, you want it to say like type name, type name, or maybe like in, uh, in JSON, you can, you can say, you know, type is a uh, user, right? But in, in Rust, Type is actually a keyword, so you can't just write type. So you have to uh, you have to give it a different name here. So you'll just say like type name, but you want it to say type. So what you do is you go to these um, these attributes here, and this is where most people first start to customize Serdy. And you have this um, you know all sorts of things. There's too much to go over here, but there's like you can rename the field. Uh, a lot of the time you'll have like enums in other languages that are all in uppercase or you can change the case to uh, usually screaming snake case. You'll see that you have that. Um, what else? There's like flattening, like maybe you'll have an, a, um, a type that is like that's nested and you want it to just uh, flatten it and turn like take all the properties and like stick them together uh, into a single spot. So there's you know, there's a ton of stuff here, container, variant, field attributes. So pretty much um, this is probably where you would start to uh, make your own changes. And then after that, there's like custom if you need to uh, implement the trait yourself and a whole bunch of other stuff. So Serdi is pretty uh, flexible and uh, yeah, everybody loves it. So there you go. I hope you, I hope you like Serdi.